Another one. They're actually biting a lot. That's delicious. Well, welcome back to another video, everybody and or anybody. My name's Christian, if you're new here, and this is Make Time for Fishing. We have a beautiful day. It is uh, like second week of February, and it's about 70 degrees and sunny right now. Light winds, I think it's gusting up to about 10 today, which is pretty calm for uh, this time of year. So it should be some beautiful weather. I've got a lot of mud crabs. I'm going sheep's head fishing, as I often do. Uh, our freezer's looking a little bare, so I'm trying to catch some food for dinner. Uh, I'm planning to do a catch and cook today, so stay tuned at the end for that. I apologize in advance. Uh, my kayak is pretty beat up right now, so the pedal drive is pretty loud. I'm actually planning to get a new kayak, hopefully in the near future, so stay tuned for that. But for now, uh, you're gonna have to put up a little bit of pedaling noise, but hopefully the fishing will be worth it. Uh, and one last note, I am fishing the Convict Classic, which is an online sheep's head fishing tournament, uh, which has multiple categories. Uh, best 10 fish is your measurement for the uh, three month period that this runs. It runs for, I think, 100 days total. So if you're interested in participating and you're in the Southeast, uh, somewhere along the coast, please feel free to sign up. It's a lot of fun, it's inexpensive, and uh, you could win some cool prizes. But I'm gonna go ahead and start fishing. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy. Let's go ahead and pull out our first mud crab. I got a bunch of good ones yesterday because um, it was about 70 degrees like it is today. So there was a lot of big ones out. Nice big crab on that half ounce jig. I always forget to mention this, but I'm gonna go ahead and mention it right now before I start the video. I got two great sponsors in the channel. Uh, Grundens, I'm wearing their deck boots and one of their sun shirts and Toadfish, of course. If you've been watching for any amount of time, you realize, but I don't plug them enough and they do a lot of great things for me, get me some great gear. And they also hooked you guys up with some promo codes for discounts. If you go and check the description, uh, you can get money off your order. But let's go ahead and start fishing and hopefully we're gonna get a whole bunch today. We have a big king tide right now, which means there's a big difference, uh, much higher than usual difference between high and low tide. So it's a lot of water movement, strong currents, and it can cause the fish to do some interesting things. Sometimes they're really fired up, sometimes the bite is non-existent, but we're gonna find out. Hopefully it's the latter. Let's go ahead and try to drop right on the back of this piling. If you've never seen my videos um, where I go over in depth how to fish for sheep's head and you're new to sheep's head fishing or you just need a refresher, I encourage you to go check out those videos. I'll link them up above here. These dolphins were all up in my business all day, but fortunately the fish didn't seem to mind. That guy was shallow. Better go ahead and land him before this dolphin comes in. Not bad, but I could do better for keeping size. First one of the day. I bet he's almost 14, which is our legal slot here in South Carolina. Never get tired of seeing these fish. <laughs> okay, well that guy was shallow and maybe because this dolphin's circling around. All right, fresh crab. Go ahead and toss it in. I didn't actually feel a bite. I just noticed that my jig was moving sideways. Another one. Pretty good. Get him before that dolphin shows up. Nice. I think he's gonna go in the cooler. Got that jig right in the top lip. Nice fish. And if they're over 16, I'm gonna try to get a picture for that sheep's head tournament, Convict Classic. Oh yeah, 16 and a half. Then what I like to do, once I get that first one in there, is I pour some water, make a little bit of a slurry. 
That way those fish bleed really well. Get as much of the blood out of that meat as possible. Make for the best fillets for the best meals. Apparently these dolphins aren't that scary to the fish because that's happening right here and 20 yards away I'm catching sheep's head. It's probably much too deep for what the fish are doing today. It's 19 feet, but you never know. Could be a big old one hanging out in there. dropped him. It's a long ways down. Oh, there's fish in there. There's definitely fish and they're actually biting a lot. I think this is a small guy. Yeah, but it's the right type. Nice. Third one of the day, vastly different. I'm 18 feet, that last one was in about three and a half, four feet. This is only a half ounce jig, by the way, and I'm able to fish it so deep, even in pretty strong current right now, only because I'm fishing in the eddy, which is the uh, current break on the backside of structure like these pilings. This feels heavy. Need to get him out. Oh, that's a nice one. That's what I was hoping for. Good fish. Oh man, big old fish. Got this nice fat fish from deep in the structure on those pilings there. I'm gonna guess he's 18 to 19 inches, but it's a thick fish. Let's get a measurement for the tournament. Take that picture and then get him in the box, unless he's over 20, which I don't think he is. He's got the weight of a 20 incher. Oh yeah. This guy measured 18 and a half, almost 18 and three quarters. Really big round fish. He's going in the box. Oh, you see that? There's somebody in there. Oh, no. Shoot. <laughs> that wasn't small. Get back in there and see if we can get another chance at that fish. Or one of his friends. That was a big fish. <sighs> this is not going to be the same class of fish. Oh, but it's a nice one. gladly take him, but I don't believe that was what I was hooked into before. That's probably a 17. Get him on the board, get him in the cooler. Just make 17. Right, go ahead and get this fish in the cooler. Keep going. That's three fish now in the cooler. Not sure how many released, but not terribly a lot. I'm happy with how it's going so far. We're just getting to slack tide, which means I still got several more hours to fish. And I've got a lot of crabs left. And I usually do better on the rising tide, personally. <laughs> That's not a bad one either. He'll go back, but he's probably close to 14. 
So I'm really excited for this recipe today. This is gonna be the debut of one of our newest kitchen toys. This is a Phillips homemade pasta maker. It's really neat. Uh, you just throw a few ingredients in there, some flour, egg, and a little bit of water, and in about 10 minutes, it does all the mixing and everything like that. It pushes out whatever pasta shape you choose to put in the front. It's kind of like a, a Play-Doh factory, you know, where you squish it out and it comes out in like spaghetti, and that's actually what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be making fresh homemade spaghetti, and we're gonna be doing a sheep's head piccata. Uh, you might have had a chicken piccata before at a restaurant, or maybe you've made it at home and it's really similar. We're gonna bread the fish, lightly pan fry it, and then after we finish cooking that fish, we're gonna use the same pan. This is a one pan meal, which we always love when we can get away with that, and we're going to make a butter lemon sauce, and that's what really gives that iconic flavor to a piccata. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start on the pasta, and then we'll get going on the fish. So before I start, I do wanna give proper credit to the mediterraneandish.com. That is where I got the recipe that I worked off of for this meal. It's called their 20 minute fish piccata. So this machine is really cool and very simple. You just combine semolina flour, egg, and water, and it does all the mixing, and after a couple of minutes, it'll start extruding the pasta. Extruding is just the process where the machine actually pushes the dough through the pasta shape that you picked. It's interesting, through the window, you can see where it's mixing, and the dough looks really dry, but you'll see when it extrudes, it really comes together. And then it's nice to either cover your counter with flour or if you're using a cutting board or some kind of pan, cover that with flour so the pasta dough doesn't stick to it. So as you can see at the beginning of the pasta making cycle, the noodles are coming out pretty quickly. I try to let it come out to a good long noodle before I cut it off with the little pasta scraper there. And over to the right side of the screen, I have a pasta drying rack. Using the drying rack really gives the pasta a nice unique texture that is hard to achieve otherwise. As you start running out of dough, that machine is going to extrude slower and slower until it stops altogether. For this recipe, we're going to pan fry the fish, and first step is patting those fillets dry with paper towels. Then we're going to pour some flour out to season it. Then we're going to use that seasoned flour to dredge the fish before we fry it. And for seasoning, I just did a healthy amount of paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, salt, and pepper. That combination is Elisa's and I's go-to seasoning mixture for pretty much anything in the kitchen. When dredging fish and flour, or really anything, it's important to get a nice, even coating all over every surface. That's how you get those nice, crispy bites you aim for when you're frying fish like this. Now it's time to start heating up that pan. I added a tablespoon of butter and a couple tablespoons of olive oil. You're gonna wanna allow that oil to get nice and hot before you add the fish, and that's how you get it really crispy. Then go ahead and add your dredged fillets in. I like to cook at a medium high heat for about three, three and a half minutes per side. While the first side of that fish is crisping up, I'm gonna go ahead and dice up a shallot. That's gonna be used for the sauce once the fish is done. After about three minutes, check the fish to see if that first side is looking nice and crisp. Then you can go ahead and flip them over. Try to be more careful than I am when you're flipping the fish so you don't break them up. You'll see later that one of my fillets got pretty mangled, but it all tastes the same, so no harm, no foul. Once that fish is done, I transfer it over to a wire rack. Then I put it in the oven at about 200 degrees to keep it nice, crispy, and warm for when it's time to serve. After removing the fish from the oil, I add a little bit more butter to the pan. And in that same pan that I cooked the fish in, I'm gonna add the shallot. Let that cook for a few minutes until it starts to get translucent and soft like you would with an onion. After a few minutes of cooking that shallot, I add a quarter cup of white wine. Allow that to cook off for a minute. Then I added a quarter cup of fish stock that I actually made myself in another video. And then I squeezed the juice of half a lemon into the sauce as well. Then I added a couple teaspoons of flour to help thicken up that sauce. Then to finish off the sauce, I stirred in a few tablespoons of the piccata's signature ingredient, capers. Now that the sauce is all squared away, it's time to go ahead and cook that pasta. This fresh pasta only takes two minutes to cook and that's why it's important to make sure you have everything else ready because this pasta is going to be done in a hurry. After two minutes, I drained the pasta, mixed it into that piccata sauce, and all that's left to do now is serve the food and taste what I made. Let's go ahead and start plating. This looks amazing. Then to finish off the plate, I sprinkled a little bit of fresh parsley on top. Now let's go ahead and try it. All right, I'm really excited to eat. Let's go ahead and try this. It smells really good. I'm gonna try the pasta first, actually. Big pasta guy. Mm. Really good al dente. 
And let's go ahead and try some of the fish. That's delicious. And I gotta get one more bite. The sauce of that piccata is nice and light and buttery, lemony, and that breading is nice and light, does not cover up the natural flavors of that sheep's head. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and dive in. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, let me know if you wanna see more Catchy Cooks in the future, especially with the pasta machine. But as always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.